I'm glad I got here for the last couple of minutes of that because I am perplexed by the idea that somehow we have plenty of fossil fuel permits issued well into the future. We are waiting on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of prepared permit applications on federal land in North Dakota. The cleanest oil, by the way, in the world, it, it, and the produce the cleanest um, in North Dakota, even after a judge has ordered the, the uh, administration to stop violating their law and, and doing the required by law uh, quarterly uh, auctions uh, on the federal lands. It's, it's, it's incredible. I, and, and the idea that somehow we're going to just electrify everything um, with some new transmission lines. By the way, I, was a, I, I cited lots of transmission lines when I was on the North Dakota Public Service Commission. I never had a hard time permitting a transmission line in North Dakota. Never did. Now, we always had trouble when we got to the, to the Red River beyond that, so we had to trick the system in ways to, to we'd create more, trans, we'd take more transmission of our product into the big towns in North Dakota and use existing transmission lines to move our other, our other electricity, that, that have legacy lines that have gone into Minnesota for decades. Whether it was wind or coal or natural gas, um, we have all the above. Um, and so I, I empathize a little bit with the siting of transmission, but I don't think that, that what we're talking about, if, if we do what HR1 is suggesting, it's not just about fossil, it's, it's about all energy. It's, about, it's, it's, it's fuel neutral. But when you start talking about paying for these projects that are localized, that's where things get co complicated. And I, I believe, uh, and, I, and I, one thing is I love about Senator Merkley is he likes to debate. Um, we don't do enough of it, do we, Jeff? We don't do enough uh, debating around here, not, enough, not enough talking. So anyway, all of that, and I haven't even begun. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I thank you all for being here. I have a... A question, I may not ever get to any of them that, I, that were prepared, but one thing is, first of all, I'm disappointed that there aren't any agencies here that actually issue permits, but I'm hoping, Mr. Chairman, we'll have one of those too, right? A, a hearing that actually... If you want us to, we, we just might do that. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate that. Um, not that you're unimportant to the process, but, um, but we, we need to talk to some people that actually permit some things. Do you, do you guys think, and I'll start with you, Ms. Mallory, since you, you oversee, CEQ oversees NEPA, and, and obviously um, there are projects, uh, and we had a lot of discussion, bipartisan discussion, about um, you know, the, the process and the timelines, as we've been talking about. Do you think timelines can be an enforceable thing? In, in other words, whether it's the two-year EIS, one-year EA, um, how would we enforce that? And, and do you worry that it could be gamed by the favored fuel, which, whichever fuel that might be. It could be on either side. Do, do you worry about that? Uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. I mean, I think that what we've tried to focus on in our uh, permitting action plan is a recognition that we need to have um, agencies uh, focus on what is possible on a particular project so that you have ambitious timelines uh -huh. and that you set those timelines in ways that allow the agencies to take into account what the requirements on that project are or what the specifics of that area are, but that um, you, you use that as a driving force behind their behavior. And then the accountability measures actually come through the oversight, the, the interaction that we have with the leadership of the, the agencies, making sure that they're staying on track and uh, that we have the ability to respond when they need additional resources or when we need to have agencies share or inter, um, in the interagency process to work more effectively. So that's what we are using or believe is an appropriate way to uh, address the oversight. Let me just, one of the things when, I, when we were citing pipelines in North Dakota, and I cited a lot, Keystone, original Keystone Pipeline, 600 landowners, not one inch of it was taken. Not one inch of that land was taken. It was it, it, kind of amazing. I don't know that we could do it today. Um, but even gathering lines on federal lands and whatnot, we found a way to streamline the process through the, in, you know, the interagency process with, with actually adding environmental protections. In other words, there was even more review because there was a synergy of all of the agencies working at the same time rather than, you know, in chronological order, they were working collaboratively. And, and this is, that's a win-win. That, whatever side of the issue you're on, that seems like a win-win. We need to get to that. I don't know that another council in the process actually helps it a lot. 
Um, I was going to ask you about major questions, doctrine at the courts, and, and the potential Chevron doctrine, and the imp imp impact that might have. Hey, well, go ahead if you want. Well, I'm just. If, does anybody have any thought on that? Um, you know, the, the the court's recent decision in, in um, West Virginia versus EPA, for example. Um, I know it's not permitting specifically, but it it is related policy in in terms of agencies taking taking authorities that weren't granted them. Do, do you watch that more carefully now that the court has said, no, listen, you don't, it, the absence of a prohibition is not a license to create power for yourselves. Is that a, is, is that? Yeah, I mean, well, thank you for the question, uh, Senator. I mean, obviously, when the Supreme Court rules on an environmental policy, we take that very seriously and organize ourselves with that, with that in mind. Good answer. Thank you. I'm sorry we didn't have more time. I got, I got fired up. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> That's not That's a good bad thing. thing.